to the picture nail down. I'm Jason Gilbo, J Gilbo 11. With me is Russell Clay at Russell J Clay. Taking a look at tonight's 15 game slate here. Uh, and you and I were kind of, we've been talking before. Uh, we hit record. And a pretty fun slate. You got a lot of pitching options. They've kind of really topped your bottom that you can go with. Yeah, definitely. And and unlike yesterday where Kershaw and Bumgarner obviously stole the show, um, it's, it's more uh, reasonable, I'd say, on both sites. So obviously we're um, going to review that for you. But yeah, I think it's actually pretty reasonable and there's a lot of good pitching. So I, I am excited. This should be fun. Um, let's let's talk about um, not baseball though today. Let's kind of just go random and uh, off. Let's like I want to take this pod off roading right now, and we just avoid pitchers and like talk about I don't know Stephen King books or something. <laughs> you want to talk about it? Why it is yeah. 10, 10 nine on DK? Yeah, like, we're doing yeah. a little Stephen King DFS. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's so random. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, first game here, Yankees versus Rockies, Chad Bettis versus Ivan Nova. Um, Yankees pretty big favorites and projected for five and a half runs. So I, I don't really think we're looking at either team in this game or either pitcher as well, huh? Yeah, I, I'm definitely with you. I think, you know, over under a nine and a half, uh, looking at those two pitchers, they haven't been good this season. I'm looking at quite a few Rockies bats uh, and Yankees bats in this matchup. I think this is going to be a really favorable game on both sides for offense. Um, and yes, the Rockies aren't in course, but Yankee Stadium is a pretty damn good place for for hitters. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think you really like that for Rockies bats. Obviously, you like that projected um, total for the Yankees as well. Um, <laughs> we'll see how Chad Bettis does if he gets. If Chad Bettis gets through three innings, like, good for him, man. I'll, I'll be happy for him. Yeah, I mean, it, it's going to be tough for both those guys to really get through that order. Uh, and I, I do think, that, I mean, combined, that could be one of the higher scoring games on this slate. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, Padres and Orioles, next one here, Luis Perdomo, uh, Tyler Wilson, over under a 10. Baltimore, big favorites, minus 185. Uh, Padres have been quietly kind of, well, not quietly, I guess, but they've been coming around a little bit of late and, in this ballpark, I even I don't even think a Tyler Wilson's even a viable GPP play, even though it is the Padres. Dude, Will Myers has been shouting from the rooftops. Um, he's been incredible lately. I I don't know where this came from. I mean, he's a good player, but I did I didn't see this coming. So um, yeah, I think uh, are we avoiding the Padres' offense right now, at least against bad pitchers. Oh, I definitely think so. I mean, you look at the last two weeks, I mean, they're right there with the Red Sox as far as uh, Woba goes. I mean, and I'm not necessarily saying the Red Sox have been good over the last two weeks, but Padres are right in the middle of the league. So I, I do think it is a stay away, and I think you yeah. can look at some Padres bats here. And again, earlier in the year, we were kind of – it was kind of an every night thing where even a bad pitcher, you were like, hmm, well, it is the Padres, and – I don't think right now. I think it'll come back down to earth. I think they will at some point, maybe 10 games from now, just kind of fall back into what their historical splits say. But right now, um, I don't think now is the time to target them with a guy like Tyler Wilson. Yeah, no, and I, I think people are looking at Tyler Wilson. They're looking at his last start against Boston. I mean, you know, he carried a no-hitter for the longest time in that game and completely frustrated us, but – Overall, I mean, he's still not a great pitcher, um, and you're looking mm-hmm. at him. I mean, that's the first time he's been up over really 15 points uh, in the season. So, for me, it's just a yeah. Right. That that was the that was the only time he had over four strikeouts in a in an outing. So, I mean, tough to expect that again, you know? Yeah, even against the Padres, right? So, uh, looking here at the Giants and Padres, Johnny Cueto um, versus Wilfred Boskan. And uh, this, I don't know why, but that one just cracks me up. Boss game. And uh, you, you got the Giants minus 156 favorites. Over and of eight. Um, you look at this Pirates offense. I mean, they've been bad of late. Uh, you know, over the last two weeks, uh, 29th and Woba, a 26% strikeout rate. We've seen them just be consistently dominated. Uh, I like Cueto here. Um, once again, I, I think you can kind of attack this Pirates team, even though, you look at their seasonal numbers, they're up top as far as, you know, Woba, and they don't have a big strikeout rate against righties, but that's kind of changed lately. 
Um, and Cueto's been solid this year. I mean, ERA right around two, decent strikeout rate. Uh, doesn't walk many guys, and it's also a nice ballpark. Yeah, I don't mind Cueto. Um, he's he's in an intriguing matchup here, but I'm not totally in love with it either. Um, the Pirates have struggled quite a bit of late. Um, I don't mind the front of their lineup in terms of um, guys that might be able to get to them. But, yeah, once you get beyond that, um, it's kind of a rough matchup for the Pirates. So, um, overall, I like him. I think he might be a little expensive on DK, but I, I'd be willing to pay that in a tournament. I just do think there are some some better values at uh, at pitcher there. Yeah, I think my biggest thing is that you have Syndergaard priced 200 more on DraftKings or right. 100 less, and I, I like Syndergaard quite a bit more. So, um, yeah, I think Coyle's kind of more of just a swerve, kind of in hopes that maybe Syndergaard has a rougher outing against the Royals or, or a Fernandez kind of – Right, Fernand, Fernandez, Kluber, Chris Sale. Like, I, I don't know. It's not that he's a bad option, but I'm just kind of overlooking him. So that could come back to bite me. But um, I, I, I'm just more intrigued by other options. I think. No, I definitely understand. I mean, you look at those top five guys. I mean, Cueto definitely is ranked fourth or fifth. I mean, among those names here. Yeah. Um, moving on, to the next one here. You got Diamondbacks and Blue Jays. Patrick Corbin versus Marco Estrada. Over under of nine, Toronto minus 179 favorites there. Uh, obviously, uh, a lefty against uh, Blue Jays has now become a thing to just automatically fade. It's in the Rogers Center. Um, Marco Estrada has pitched well. I'm a little concerned for him in this matchup just because yeah. he can be a little bit home run prone. And I think he has pitched better than than expected this season. I think there is some regression coming. And uh, that might happen tonight at home against uh you know, a pretty powerful Diamondbacks offense. And, um, again, in terms of his price and where he's at, he doesn't really have the ceiling to compete with a lot of those guys that aren't even that much more expensive. So, um, he's again, he's a decent option, but he's definitely not in my top top three pitchers or anything of tonight. So, um, if you take a, if you look at him in that respect – um, could he get 25 to 30 tonight? Yes. But again, um, uh, you, you don't target the Diamondbacks, you know, especially against with non aces. Like, obviously, if it's a Kershaw, you are, but um, Estrada, not an ace, like you mentioned, due to regress. He does have a decent shot at getting a win here. Um, as you mentioned, uh, Donaldson, Encarnacion, Saunders, just smash. Um, probably going to just smash Corbin off the uh, the field there, but we'll see. Um, <laughs> I could see 10 runs there, but beyond that, I'm, I'm not really buying the, the ceiling there of Estrada. Yeah, it's just the price is just way too high. I mean, 11-3 on DK is absolutely insane. And you look at 8,700 on, on FanDuel. I like Nola for just 300 more or even Kluber for, for 1,000 more. Um, so I think that's just kind of where I'm looking at. He just doesn't make the cut for me tonight. Right, right. Uh, next one here, you get the White Sox and Red Sox here. Chris Sale versus Clay Buckholz, over under of nine. Boston's still favorites in this one. Minus one away, obviously more close to a mm -hmm. pick, which is surprising. Um, first things first, I mean, I'm really only looking at Chris Sale on DraftKings, um, where he's 8,700. Fandle, he's still priced high at 10-3. I, I'm going to fade him there, but... Um, it's an intriguing price. I mean, you look at this Red Sox offense, they haven't been great uh, over the last few weeks. And um, sales oh, like yeah. who, who's very capable of, of throwing a dominant outing. A Red Sox fan with a dirty mind made that price for him because he's just sucking us all in like a vacuum. <laughs> and we're just getting sucked into that price. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Normally, uh, the rule of not playing pitchers against the Red Sox is very sound. I mean, obviously they've been struggling of late, but again, you still, it's still a dangerous game you're playing, but with sale, I mean, I could see him shutting them down. Why, why not? You know, it's not like he doesn't have good stuff or he's not an ace. So, um, I, I can see that 8,700 worth the gamble. What does he need to get 20 on DK and then maybe 30 on, on uh, FanDuel? Well, no, he needs way more than that on FanDuel. He's not in play on FanDuel, but I was trying to equivalent uh, points there. But um, 
20 points on, on DK at 8,700 is fine. So I, I think he is a great pay down option for sure. Yeah, I do too. I mean, if you look at me, he pitched against Detroit, seven innings, three earned runs, seven Ks, uh, got the win, 23 DK points. That's a reasonable outcome for a guy who's 8,700. I, I don't mind that. And I think that's a capable line for him. Right. Uh, and he still even has that big time upside. I mean, you look at this Red Sox offense, I mean, they're middle of the league over the last two weeks. Uh, the strikeout rate is higher against lefties than it is against righties, so you do like that for sale. Um, and, and I got to think, I mean, I know Boston's small, small favorites here, but you got to think, well, the White Sox are going to get some run support off Clay Buckholz. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that's where we're going with this matchup, Adam Eaton and all the the gang there. Um, I think we can roll with those guys as sort of a cheap stack for sure. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's a lot of nice price tags for those White Sox bats there. <laughs> yep. Uh, as far as Clay Buckholz go, I mean, he, he's a guy who struggled this season. Even against the White Sox offense, it's been very up and down. Uh, not a guy who's in play for me. Yeah, no. And even in the starts where he did start off well and maybe gets through the lineup, he just gets smashed. The, the second time through. So um, I, that's not a road I'm willing to venture down anymore. That no. was that was two times for me, and I'd had enough of that ride. Two times too many. I was like at the fair when you eat too much fried dough, and then you get on the uh, the thing Total that roll. spins. Yeah. No, no, no. The one that spins you upside down. Oh. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's like the scene from The Sandlot where, you know, you're just barfing over the side. Yeah. No, nah, I've had enough of that ride for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Next game here, we got the Raisin Indians. We got Blake Snell versus Corey Kluber. Uh, Cleveland big favorites here, minus 185. Over under of eight. Kluber's a guy who been really frustrating this season. I, I still don't think he's a cash game guy. I still think you take Syndergaard or Fernandez, who's been far more consistent. But Kluber, I mean, at a cheaper price tag in comparison to those other names, definitely a nice GPP option for me tonight um, because you're looking at this Rays team that's just really, they're not that great against right-handed pitching. They have a monster strikeout rate of 25%. Uh, last two weeks, they rank in the bottom five in Woba, uh, a 23% strikeout rate. So Kluber, I mean, if he's on his game at home here, I, I think, you know, he does have potential to match a lot of those guys or even become the top scoring pitcher on this slate. Yeah, definitely. I like this matchup for him. I like his I like his price on um, FanDuel quite a bit, ninety seven hundred. So that's definitely a solid solid price there. Obviously, he's struggled of late, but he's still Corey Kluber. Uh, still has the the great stuff, and I'm I'm not worried about him in in that respect. So against this Rays lineup, um, I'm not really. No one really scares me against him. You know. So I, I, I could see this going in a really positive way for him. So I, I, I like it quite a bit. Yeah, and I mean, he's been rather – I mean, you guess you could say he's been a little bit unlucky. I mean, 2.93 FIP, 3.38 Sierra to go with his you know ERA over four. So you expect him to come back down and be a little bit more consistent. And I think that could, does start tonight. Uh, and as you mentioned, I mean, that price second 9,700 on um, FanDuel is really nice. Uh, I can see myself having quite a bit of Kluber on FanDuel tonight just because – um, you know, he has that huge time upside, and at that price, I mean, that's a steal because if he can match uh, a center guard or Fernandez for, for that much cheaper, that's huge. Yeah, definitely. Definitely agree. Uh, and as far as Snell goes on the other side, I mean, it's a tough matchup against this Indians team that's kind of rolling right now. Yeah, no. No, no, no. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> Next game here, you got the Mariners and Tigers. James Paxson versus Justin Verlander. Detroit minus 130, eight and a half over under. Um, Verlander is a guy who, much like Estrada for me tonight, kind of priced a little bit higher. Really tough matchup against Seattle. Uh, kind of just a guy who just doesn't fall on my radar. Too big of a slate. Uh, mm. Too tough of a matchup to really make any any point to play him tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Seager Cano. No. 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 Yeah. I just I I don't play righties versus Seattle. I just think that's a suicide mission uh, most nights. So Verlander has pitched well, but even as a contrarian tournament play, I'm not sure that's that's all that viable with the other options tonight. Yeah, I don't think so either. It impacts on the other side. I mean, way too many right-handed bats that are starting to heat up. Yeah. Finally getting Upton going, um, dude. Yeah, if if Upton. 
if Upton gets going, um, that lineup is going to be brutal to get through one through six. So, um, that's tough. I, I, yeah, sorry, Paxton. Yeah. Good luck, sir. <laughs> uh, Royals Mets here. You got Ian Candy versus Noah Syndergaard over under a seven, uh, Mets minus minus one eighty one. Syndergaard at home. Uh, he's been absolutely dominant this season. I mean, a 15.1% swing strike rate, 32% strikeout rate, uh, walk rate of, of 3.6. I mean, sub two ERA. He's been the number two behind Kershaw from this season as far as yeah. SP ratings go. I mean, he's been I, absolutely dominant. I was looking up some Kershaw stuff last night, and the one thing that's Ooh, kind getting of, a little dirty, a little after hours, huh? That's it's so <laughs> hilarious to like look at his numbers. Like he, he has 18 Ks per walk. Yeah. Like, what? What do you mean you have 18 Ks per walk? Like that is so far above everyone else. Like second place is like nine. Like he doubles anyway. I I don't know. That was just hilarious to me when I was looking at that issue. I was like, how do you even do that? It's it, crazy, crazy control, man. It's insane, dude. I mean, watching him night in and night out, it's just when he drops those, those curveballs in like perfectly on the corner, it's just it walks off the mound like no big deal. Yeah. It's it's sick. It's so unfair. Yeah. But Syndergaard here, I mean, you look at this Royals team, uh, they have been hitting the ball well of late. Still carry a higher strikeout rate than before, 22% over the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, you look at Syndergaard here, and this is a lineup that he can absolutely dominate. Uh, yeah. He's already shown it once before this season. Uh, he's a heavy favorite. Um, I mean, just at home, I mean, he's been absolutely uh, unreal. I mean, a sub-2 ERA there, 64 strikeouts, over 45 innings pitch, which is just crazy. So, uh, for me, I mean, he's playable in all formats yet again. Yeah, no, all those factors you mentioned are huge. Um, and obviously, Royals being projected for three runs, Mets minus 194 favorites. So, uh, all, all sales ahead, you know, like, this is... This is seems pretty safe to me. This is cash game to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's just how good he's been. Yeah. Um, and I think you kind of look at I me, mean, his price is, yes, it's high on drafting. It's not bad, though. 12 nine still doable with this slate. Mm -hmm. um, and even 10 nine on Fandle is a really nice price for him because it's still 1100 cheaper than Fernando's. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, and Ian Kennedy on the other side, I mean, not a guy I'm looking at on, on single pitcher sites, but. Uh, seventy seven hundred on on Fandles. Yeah, not not, on DraftKings. not bad. It's not bad. Um, if it wasn't Cindergard, I'd be even more intriguing because I'm not I'm not too afraid of this Mets lineup. Um, especially especially with a righty. So I, I don't know. I think he could have a quality start there, but he's competing with some tough competition on this slate. So probably a no, but. Definitely yeah. an intriguing price. I think a win's unlikely, but is twenty DK points, twenty two DK DK points, reasonable without a win there? I think I, so. Yeah, I do too. And you look at the Mets. I mean, twenty fifth and Wobo over the last two weeks. They haven't been good. That lineup's not really that great. Mm -hmm. um, and you look at them this season. I mean, they've been really mediocre against right handed pitching. So, intriguing GPP option for cheap though, for sure. Definitely. Uh, next one here, you got the Braves and Marlins. Bud Norris versus, versus Jose Fernandez, over under a seven. Um, Miami minus two sixty five favorites. That's huge there. Um, and you look at this Braves offense. Once again, much like the Padres, they've been hitting well of late. Um, it, you look over the last two weeks, it's Braves, Red Sox, and Padres, right in the middle of that tier, right in the middle of the league, which is just kind of funny. You take kind of the two polar opposites from you know uh. the, the season right now. They're at the middle. Um, Still, though, this is a matchup that Fernandez should be able to dominate and come away with. Yeah, I mean, other than Freddie Freeman, who I always give a puncher's chance against a righty, but I mean, yeah, this is this could be a rough one for the Braves. Um, I, I like this matchup for him. I think he's the guy you pay up for. Um, and I think it's pretty much that simple. I mean... Obviously, it's going to be tough to get a cinder guard, um, sort of Jose Fernandez on DK, but with 15 games, there's going to be a lot of punts. So I actually do think it's conceivable to get something like that in, in uh, 
maybe even a cash lineup depending on who pops up. So uh, definitely keep that in mind. And yeah, Fernandez obviously in play in all formats and poor Bud Norris. This is going to be a rough one. Giancarlo, we're oh in, baby. <laughs> I'm his biggest fan. Back in, back at it again. Here we are. Two oh. hits, three hits, and a homer in the last three games. Let's go. Let's do it. Yeah, Bud Norris is in trouble. I mean, to say yeah. the least. Uh, and you look back at Fernandez, I mean, 37.5% strikeout rate this year. I mean, there's a reason why he's priced that high because – the punch outs are insane. I mean, the fielders just take off their gloves and just kick back back in the outfield because, you know, he's whiffing so many guys. It's insane. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if this Marlins team gets a hot Stanton going, um, they're going to be a problem because everyone else has been doing their job this year. So, um, yeah, definitely not playing Bud Norris. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, next one here, you have the uh, Cardinals and Cubs, Adam Wainwright, Jason Hamill. Uh, this is kind of a wash for me as far as pitching goes. These are just two offenses yeah. that I don't want to pick on, too. Um, Wainwright's pitch better, but I still think this is a tougher matchup, and I think Hamill against the Cardinals is still something I don't want to take a gamble on as far as the slate goes. Yeah, even if Wainwright has a good start, this kind of seems like a, a game where – he definitely gives up one or two home runs, even if he has a good start. <laughs> I don't know. That's just that's the vibe I always get from this Cubs team. Even when they don't kill you, someone's still getting a homer or or beating you up in some way. So um, I'm not I'm not too in on Wainwright, and I still don't want to target the Cardinals with righties. So um, that's that's what I'm thinking about there. Yeah, and you look at Hamill. I mean, he's pitched well this season. He's pitched well against the Cardinals twice. Um, but there is some regression coming for him as well. And yeah. I just think overall, you look, I, this game on, on a full slate here is just kind of a stay away game as far as hitters and, and pitchers. I, I, would love, I would love these guys on a smaller slate for sure. Um, I, I think you could really work something out there. But yeah, on a big slate, they're just, the upside isn't there for them, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. And uh, moving on to the next one here, you got the Reds and Rangers, Anthony Descafani, Kobe Lewis, over under nine and a half, Texas big favorites. Kobe Lewis, 6 and 0, 2.81 ERA. Kobe Lewis. Yeah, he's pitched well, but man, I, he's given up a 37% hard ball rate. Uh, Sierra, 4.4, or yeah, 4.64. There's some regression coming, and we saw this last year with, with Lewis. He had a strong first start, or first half, and then slowly got back to his usual self, and that's eventually going to come. Kobe Lewis. <sighs> yeah, I just hate these guys like him and Josh Tomlin. They just I know. frustrate me. I know. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not playing him tonight by any means. Um, I, I like I like this Reds team, as you've noticed if you've watched any pods this year. Or I like their offense, obviously. Nobody likes their pitching, other than their, the mothers of the pitchers. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, against righties, I like Votto and Bruce, so I'd toss them in there. I think they're uh, actually decent values tonight, so um, no no Kobe Lewis. No, I don't think so either. And, and as far as Escafani goes, I mean, struggles too much with lefties for me to take a chance on him against this Rangers offense that I like quite a bit. I think they're a stackable team tonight. For sure. So. For sure. <laughs> uh, next one here, you got the Phillies and Twins, Aaron Nola versus Tyler Duffy. Your I'm a boy. Bit yeah. Yeah. Your I'm gonna, boy. Vegas doesn't seem to be on him as much as I am. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, Minnesota minus 116 favorites, which is odd. Uh, I know the Phillies offense is bad, but over under of eight, I mean, Noah's coming off two really rocky starts, but overall, I mean, he's been very consistent before that this year. Um, nice strikeout rate. I mean, 26%. You're looking at a Twins team that. Uh, over the last two weeks, I mean, still bottom of the league and against right-handed pitching, they carry that big strikeout rate at 22.5%. So, for me, I think Nola at the price tag that he's at, uh, um, really intriguing SP2. Uh, he is a cash game guy for me. Uh, I think that might vary for other people, but personally, I, th I think I like him as an SP2. I like him as a number one as far as GPPs go on FanDuel. You know, you know what this game is? When when you were at school and you didn't have lunch money for the day and you were in the lunch line and you still hadn't asked anyone yet and you get like that, like, oh, no, that feeling in your stomach, like, I still got to ask someone, what am I going to do? And then, like, it's that feeling. That's this game, like, right before you have to ask someone for, for lunch money. 
Um, so <laughs> I, I'm, I have no idea what that feeling is. <laughs> you never, you never forgot lunch money. Like when I was younger. Yeah. No, I was a home lunch kid. I brought my oh. bag of lunch. <laughs> oh, come on, man! School lunch is crap. Uh, Taco Tuesday, bro. Dude, at my school didn't even have Taco Tuesday. There was a pizza day. I got myself ready for pizza day, but I brought my dollar fifty, my two dollars. Taco Tuesday? You didn't have Taco? All right, whatever. No. Anyway, back to this game. Trust me, if you didn't have that feeling and you were a bag lunch loser, um, <laughs> it's not a great, not a great feeling. Um, but uh, anyway, I don't know. It, Nola seems a little underpriced, underpriced at least on um, FanDuel. The Vegas line weirds me out. The 4.3, 4.5 run total for the Twins weirds me out. Um, I don't know. That just doesn't add up to me for Nola. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like he's a better arm than what he's getting credit for. So, I, I don't know. That, yeah. that weirds me out. So, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to be targeting that. Definitely a tournament swerve I'd be willing to make, but that's – that's a weird line for sure. Uh, I mean, this guy's usually around six to nine strikeouts per start here. Uh, and you're also looking, I mean, he's pitched relatively deep into games, six plus innings and, and all but uh, the last two starts. And he's going to going up against some, some good offenses before. I mean, when you look in the past, I mean, St. Louis, Miami, Washington, who he's all fared pretty well against. So the twins don't, don't strike me as a team that can really beat up on him. And he's kind of that finesse guy that can really dance around most of these lineups and, I don't know. I, 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 I kind of am weirded out by the Vegas thing, but I still think deep down in my heart, I'm throwing in a ton of Nola. I, I think, I think you can ignore that tonight. Honestly. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's kind of how I'm going to go about that, but that is really weird. Yeah, definitely. And, and Tyler Duffy on the other side. I mean, I know the Phillies lineup is bad, but Duffy's no. a guy who, I, I don't know. I can't really get behind using him. He's not been good even against poor offenses. He's not even the best Duffy in the league. <laughs> There's a Duffy in Kansas City that uh, is representing his name much better right now. What about Matt Duffy for the Giants? No, Jeez. I'm all I'm all about uh, Give me a Mr. Break. Royals. Give me a Royals break. Duffy, baby. <laughs> Next game here, you got the Angels and Astros. Hector Santiago versus Colin McHugh. Over under of eight and a half. Houston minus one sixty five favorites. Uh, eight and a half is moderate for what I think is going to actually happen here. From the, I think the Astros are going to. Put a couple of big long balls on the board against Santiago, who's been absolutely home run prone to righties this season. And it's a dangerous matchup for him and definitely a stay away situation. Yeah, I don't think I'm touching this game in terms of pitching. Um, I don't I don't really have much interest in McHugh either, um, even at his decent price. So um, stay away from me. Stack the Astros as usual. Your normal, your normal Astros game. Yeah, I think you look at that. And as far as the other side of things go, the Angels um, don't really possess a ton of upside for opposing pitchers. Uh, and Colin McHugh, not really a guy who's in play for me. Yeah, it's just kind of like, yeah, all right. It's just a bunch of medi mediocre things going to go on there. Yeah. You know, like maybe a walk every inning, like a hit by pitch. Just stupid things that keep him below where you need him to be. So I'm just not, no. No, like a, a double, an an infield single. Like all of these things are going to happen against Colin McHugh tonight. So I, I just don't do it. Yeah, he's not going to give you those sexy numbers, but he's also not going to be completely off the board. But I think it's just as far as I'm not looking at the Angels' offense. I'm not looking at Colin McHugh. They just kind of wash each other out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, late games here, you got the Brewers and A's. Uh, Oakland minus 149, over under of eight. Uh, Jimmy Nelson versus Sonny Gray here, and no, no, you gonna stop me? No, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm not looking at either of these guys. I mean, oh, you almost went Sonny Gray. There. No, no, I, oh, <laughs> you almost did it. I, I did it last time against Texas, and uh, I granted he got through five innings pretty pretty cleanly. He was looking really solid. And then all of a sudden, he pulls a Clay Buckholtz and gives up five, six earned in one inning and yeah. completely goes off the rails. Is it a matchup that he can have success in? Yes. Sure. Um, at 6,600 on DK, is it, is it intriguing? 
Will I have maybe a share or two because I, I put no. a Blue Jay stack? Yeah, maybe. maybe, no. maybe. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. That's fine. Um, I can respect that, actually. That's... That's a respectable move, but um, I just uh, uh, um, again, I, I think you can target this Brewers team um, some nights, especially with that strikeout rate. But I like targeting them with more strong options than than Gray. Yeah. Um, that's usually where they get just completely blown out of the water. Um, but I mean, there there's some definitely contrarian options in that lineup as well especially if you think that thing's going to blow up so a chris carter and a braun i i think are decent options there as well yeah definitely green as far as jimmy nelson the other side uh he's been horrible of late uh last three starts have been really poor uh and i'm looking at him i mean 7100 it, it's not really an option for me look at this ace team they don't strike out a ton um they're kind of just that chippy offense even though they're not great and they're not going to they're not going to score 10 runs against them, but uh, they're not going to give them a ton of upside, which you kind of need if you're taking a look at GPPs. Mm -hmm. For sure. So, uh, next one here, you got the Nationals and Dodgers. Seven and a half over under. Tanner Rourke, Scott Casimir. Uh, Dodgers minus 120 favorites. I'm not really looking at anyone in this game as far as pitching go. I think there's just a lot of better options as far as the price ranges go, as far as matchup wise. Uh, it's just kind of a stay away for me. Yeah. Not that they're uh, bad, but... No, know. no, good options, but uh, I'm not targeting either of these offenses right now. Um, yeah. Lefty on lefty for uh, the Harper-Murphy combo, so not the worst situation for Casimir, but I, I still, I'm still not targeting him tonight, and I just think there's better options on a 15-gamer. Yeah, I do too, and that's the thing for me. Maybe a smaller slate, seven or eight games, I'll take a look, but... There's a lot of options that we've named already that are more intriguing. Yeah. So let's go wrap things up here with the pitcher nailed down. Be sure to check out DaveFantasyCafe.com for all our great tools and content.